live from Miami Beach, Florida, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering .next conference, brought to you by Nutanix. Now your host, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome to Miami, Florida, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman, and we're here with the Cube live at from Nutanix Miami Next Beach. Conference. It's the it's the inaugural conference, almost a thousand people here, uh, which is an astounding number for a company that is just about five years old, less than six years old, Stu, and we're seeing a packed house here at, in Miami at the Fontainebleau Hotel. Uh, a lot of energy, a lot of disruption going on. Nutanix, for those of you who don't know, is a company that's um, tracking well over $250 million. Many forecasts have Nutanix up around $500 million in, in, a, in run rate and bookings this year. Uh, we'll, we'll be tightening them up those numbers, but essentially what Nutanix does is there's this term that emerged, sort of debate about who coined it, but, but hyper-converged, you know, bringing together uh, all different you know, components of infrastructure through software, allowing the scaling of infrastructure, doing essentially what the hyperscale guys have done in their little domains, Amazon, Google, Microsoft with Azure, bringing that into the enterprise, something that we've been talking about at Wikibon and on theCUBE for many, many years now. Nutanix went out and actually developed products around that and has developed a thriving business around it. It's pre-IPO company, a lot of talk about going IPO. Uh, we just came off the keynote, Stu, a lot of energy in there. It took a while for the crowd to get warmed up. Uh, Diraj Pandey, the CEO of Nutanix, uh, came in on after something we hadn't ever seen before at a conference, these I haven't, the customers, two customers stood up, the first customers of Nutanix stood up and announced the conference, greeted everybody at the conference, and then turned it over to Diraj. Um, and he was very humble, that's one of his H's, we'll be talking about that. We had some VCs come on, and it was sort of a, a content-rich morning, and then they hit us with the products and the announcements, and that's when the crowd really got into it. The engineers in the audience, the architects, the practitioners, the alpha geeks, they wanted that red meat, and they were dying for it. We saw it on Twitter, come on, show us the announcement, show us the innovation, and it came, and then there was a crescendo of, uh, of applause throughout the demo session, so overall, Stu, what are your thoughts? Pretty good. Yeah, Dave, so you know, when we go to these type of events, you know, how do we highlight the user community in no better way than to start off with one of the users here. Uh, really liked that Howard Ting came out, thanked the customers, uh, thanked all the employees. I mean, Dave, pretty impressive. Uh, they call them the Newtons. Uh, I think kind of funny, they got a big X in thing, kind of a little X-Men mutant uh, type promotion, some nice bright colors, but uh, Nutanix over 1,100 employees, um, it's, uh, you know, interesting to me, I remember the first time I, I heard about Nutanix and talked to them, they had about 40 companies, they had 40 employees inside the company. Uh, Dave, when you hired me to Wikibon five years ago, it was the converged infrastructure and cloud space that you, you, know, you told me to go work at. Um, at, at. When I talked to David Floyer in the, my early days at Wikibon, it was, you know, what are those hyperscale companies doing? You know, the, the early companies that were using Flash, one of the main reasons I talked to Nutanix early is they, uh, in their first uh, you know, iteration of the product, used a Fusion I.O. card inside it and productized the solution to leverage that new architecture of Flash. And obviously they've come a long way, they don't use Fusion anymore, uh, but you know, you know, NAND and Flash is you know, critical to what they're doing. They've built a whole software platform. We're going to talk a lot about XCP uh, dur during the next day and a half and, Acro day and, a half and Acropolis, um, but you know, Nutanix, is you know, the, the leader from a revenue standpoint when it comes to this hyper-convergent space, what we called uh, server SAN, Wikibon put out the definition and the first market you know, revenue and forecast in this space. Uh, Nutanix is the one that uh, you know, the other startups are chasing and the big guys are you know, slinging uh, some challenges and punches at. Uh, so you know, it's exciting to be here on the ground uh, to go through all the technology, talk to a lot of practitioners uh, and uh, the partner community, it's, it's exciting stuff. Well one of, those, one of those big guys is VMware, um, essentially what Nutanix is doing in my you know, short take here is they are accelerating all the things that VMware is slow rolling. <laughs> VMware is trying to freeze the market in certain, in certain spaces and, and Nutanix is pushing that. And so that's kind of creating an interesting tension in the, in the relationship and, and so we're going to talk about that. But before, and, and I want to talk about the announcements, and it'll become clear to our audience sort of why there's some, some, some friction going on there. But before I do that, I want to talk about, uh, Diraj uh, talked about his three H's, be hungry, be honest, and be humble. And uh, he's a humble individual, and this is a humble company, and so we saw that, and we, then we also heard from Vinod Kosla, 
Uh, and Ravi Marta, who uh, is with Lightspeed, being on Coastal, of course, is very famous, needs no introduction. And they just talked about why they were interested in Newtonix. And Vinod Kosla was very articulate. He said that he had not seen a dramatic change in architecture since Sun Microsystems. And he remembers the days when Sun was getting pressure to make itself look like VT100 terminals and look like a deck, deck vax. And Sun made a decision, you know, a, a groundbreaking decision at that moment to push back and stick to its knitting. And, and his, you know, using that analogy is Newtonix and, and not trying to mimic what's being done in the old ET. He invoked VMware, he invoked uh, uh, EMC. And then Ravi Mata used a term called the doom loop. And what he meant by that is getting sucked into the vortex of incremental R&D investment, which <laughs> every large company does. We certainly see that from EMC. They are the masters at incremental investment, but of course EMC is also very good at tucking in innovation through acquisition. Um, so it's not as though these old line companies are doomed to. Um, so that was sort of the setup before we get into the announcement. I just want to get your take on that. Yeah, D those. Dave, I thought that was great. Uh, uh, Dheeraj also said he wants you know, his employees and his customers to make sure they stay passionate and paranoid. And Dave, you know, I worked at EMC for 10 years, and you know, one of the books that, uh, you know, uh, it was originally uh, Mike Rutgers and then Joe Tucci, of course, quoted after, is Andy Grove Seminole, you know, only the paranoid survive. So EMC is always looking at that next disruptive. EMC is a player in the hyperconverged space, and of course, being an owner of VMware, they're there. Uh, so, um, but back to your, your comments on Vinod Kosla, I mean, he was there at the, you know, foundation of the file system revolution. Uh, and you know what was Nutanix? Nutanix's foundation was, you know, taking that Google file system, rolling that out into the enterprise. So taking the, those learnings from hyperscale, uh, what, what you know Nutanix calls web scale, bringing that to the enterprise. I, I've talked to the people at Nutanix that came from Google, from Facebook, uh, and it's really those lessons from the, those newer, you know, massive companies. Uh, it's about distributed architectures. I love the first time we interviewed Diraj, uh, which was uh, two and a half years ago at VMworld 2012. It wasn't a discussion of convergence or what's going on in server storage and networks. It was about distributed architectures and applications and the modernization of IT. And if, if Nutanix can stick to that message uh, and you know, really deliver on that, it's going to help move us from kind of those legacy environments onto the more you know, modern, microservice, cloud native uh, type environments. But today, Dave, I mean, the application sitting on most Nutanix, it's still, it's VMware's the hypervisor, it's the same VMs that sat in a SAN, just coming in a new operational So it's VDI, model. it's Exchange, and increasingly some of the more mission critical yeah, applications. I, I mean, Dave, when you look at a VMware environment, you know, number one thing that's behind, a, you know, sitting on top of VMware is Microsoft, and therefore Microsoft apps sitting on there. Yeah, there's some Oracle, and there's some other things like that, that and of course VDI being an application, you got Citrix and VMware there, but it's, those you know applications. So what, one of the big things we haven't talked about yet is you know the, the play of what Nutanix is doing and how that interacts with Microsoft because Microsoft's got huge affinity with the applications. Uh, and you know g going forward, we're going to have to dig into that application side a bunch, which we heard EMC talk about at EMC World and Nutanix uh, is helping to push up the stack so, with containers. So Stu, one of the things that Nutanix is doing is what John Furrier calls interclouding. They're sort of pushing at that ability to go across clouds. So, uh, Nutanix, a lot of talk about invisible. Uh, invisible. Now, we've heard Chad Sackett talk about I invisibility for a long, long time. Nutanix is actually making that happen. Not only at the storage layer, but also the virtualization layer, and ultimately their vision is to make the cloud in invisible. So I want to get into some of the announcements. Uh, you, you just published a piece of research D that we're David, just a quick comment on that. Uh, Sunil Pody, I actually think, summed it up real well. He said, complex is competent, but simple is genius. So I really like that line because it's one thing to just put a layer of abstraction, which was the old kind of storage virtualization, which we know, Dave, uh, you know, moved us forward a little bit incrementally, but we, we, to really radically change something we, to make it invisible is tough. So let's do a quick rundown of the announcements, then we'll come back and cover them uh, throughout. So Acropolis, Prism, Nuta there's a Nutanix sizer, there's a native scale out file server, there's a storage heavy fabric, there's this thing called flash pinning, uh, there's native iSCSI, uh, there's erasure coding, uh, there's Nutanix XCP, there's container creation uh, uh, as fast as VMs, uh, there's a new search capability, I don't know if that's Lucene or not, but so, wow all kinds of announcements that got increasingly more rowdy clapping. It started out as a golf clap and by the end there were hoot hoots. 
So, Stu, give us your take on the announcements yeah, in the short time. Yeah, I, I mean, wow, well, just, just so many pieces to go through, Dave. Uh, what Nutanix calls their XCP portfolio, which is the extreme computing platform, is really made up of Acropolis, which we'll go into some more, and Prism. So Prism is their management tool that they've had now for, I believe, about a year, uh, but Acropolis is the thing that's going to get the most conversation here at the show. And unpack for our community here um, because first of all, what it is is there's Acropolis hypervisor which is built with KVM technology, um, but what we heard from the Nutanix people is that base KVM, you know, storage isn't great, uh, and you know, security, you know, needs some work, and just you know, spinning it up, you know, fast and simple, uh, needed some work. So when when you buy a Nutanix platform, it does not ship with VMware, and therefore Nutanix wanted something out of the box uh, that could work well, and you know, also save some money. I mean, people, you know, the the elephant in the room there is that you know, there's been lots of companies that say that VMware has too much power in the industry and is getting too much money for the hypervisor, which in many ways has been commoditized. So if we should can be help. free. Yeah. So Hypervisor should be free. And, and even VMware has been moving towards that direction and shifting their move, uh, but uh, yeah, absolutely. And if, if you look at the overall cost, I, I remember a year ago we, we talked to uh, you know, one of the GMs from Microsoft and we said, you know, aren't you still you know, really getting a lot of price on uh, licensing? And he said, come on, licensing is 6% of the overall IT budget. You know, incrementally, us versus everybody else, it's not there. So if Microsoft isn't too expensive uh, from a licensing standpoint, VMware probably isn't either. And I tell you, Dave, customers I talk to, they're mostly happy with VMware. Sure, there's still those you know, rumblings back from the VTAX, uh, but you know, th there's a lot going on there. So Acropolis, big thing to look about there, Dave, is it's going to give the ability to be able to give mobility. So step one is if I want to do Hyper-V, big thing as we talked about, uh, or KVM-based Acropolis from ESX, we can do that. And down in the future, I can switch to containers, I can switch to cloud, uh, a lot more we want to you know, dig in there as, as, as we go through the show. All right, Stu, good, good, good. Qu quick summary, we'll be digging into each of these uh, announcements and unpacking them. We're here, we're surrounded by palm trees, steamy Miami in, in many, many ways. It's a great location, awesome. Uh, for an uh, for inaugural and conference. And how about this set, Dave? Yeah, nice set, and uh, so we're going all day today, uh, most of the day tomorrow. So Stu and I will be back. Uh, we got a number of guests. Uh, Diraj, CEO of Nutanix is coming on. We got VCs, we got practitioners, we got pundits, we got bloggers, we got Matt Eastwood coming on from IDC. So a full lineup for you here from NextConf, hashtag NextConf. Tweet that out. This is Dave Vellante, Stu Miniman. We'll be right back after this brief break.